Hello there. This is Steve Bellow. You're listening and watching Guitar Tales with Dave Cohen. And welcome to Guitar Tales. Uh, that was the great Steve Bellow giving us a little shout out there. Thank you, Steve, so much. And we want to also thank our uh, pretty new at this point sponsor, Charles Larita of uh, Mischief Studios. He was a friend of the show for years. He was a guest on season one. And what Charles has done is something super cool. Um, he's opened up Mischief Studios, uh, which is over in Pennington, New Jersey. That's right near Princeton, right in the center of the state. And I know his studio really well. Uh, Incredibly easy to get to from Pennsylvania, from New Jersey, Parkway, Turnpike, Route 1, all of that. And within Mischief Studios, it's really one-stop shopping. So what you've got there is, um, and you see it right on your screen now, first of all, Charles is an incredibly gifted musician, and he surrounds himself uh, with many other gifted musicians. So there's lessons there. If your guitar breaks, if you want to get your guitar reconditioned, like my uh, 1938 back there that I'm someday going to bring to him, uh, my, my old acoustic, um, guitar repairs. If you want to record, he has a recording studio there. So it really is a, a special place. And also he sells instruments. So uh, swing by uh, Mischief Studios. Uh, they're a friend of the show and we're thrilled that they're sponsoring us. And in conjunction with Riverview Studios, this is now our second show at the Noise Network Studios. I want to thank uh, my friend of 40 plus years, Scott Guitar Stengel, for doing the amazing work he's done to set up Noise Network. And finally, uh, we have in our uh, metaphoric and virtual waiting room, the Tone King. And for those of you um, who haven't heard of the Tone King, uh, his name is Lewis. He is a progenitor. He is one of the very first social media influencers in this space, in the space of guitar gear, guitar instruments, reviewing guitars, setting up his own really, really amazing website and YouTube page with over 100,000 followers, which is just an incredible accomplishment. And within those pages on the YouTube page is an incredible treasure trove of information and entertainment. And, and I, I took such a deep dive. It, it was really enjoyable uh, going on your page. You could hear me. You're not on screen yet, but I know you, you could hear me so far. I think you're, you're nodding so you can. I could see you off on the side screen in our studio. Um, I, I love the combination of sort of a professorial approach, but really a lot of fun too, and a boatload of personality. Uh, but what I like even more is, is the fact that, that you are a trusted authoritative source. If I want to buy a microphone, if I want to buy a pickup, a guitar, an amplifier, software, I can search your site and get an honest, meaningful, thorough, and yet entertaining review. So with that introduction, I'd love to welcome the Tone King to Guitar Tales. All right. Thank you. That was a very kind introduction. Uh, it's it's legit. There we go. That's right. We, we wanted to get that. Let's, let's do it together. Start, start, start with one of those bad boys right there. That's right. I love that on all your interviews. The uh, Start with the bad boy. I love That's that. Right. So, you know, we've been working with you for a while to get you on the show. We're really appreciative that you're here. And, and flattered that you asked, so oh, thank you. It's it's our pleasure. Um, what what you've accomplished, in, in my view and in Scott's view and in a hundred thousand other people's views, it is really amazing. You've created, it seems to me, almost like a community. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you have all these people, but then they come to you. And, and one of the things I like that you do is that you'll you'll be. I see you're looking at your computer and you'll recognize certain people. Hey, mm -hmm. guitar assist, how you doing? Things like right. that. And I, I would imagine it really fosters an environment of inclusion there. Yeah, you know, it's I, I've been at this for a while. And um, I, I think one of the more fulfilling parts of it is it really is a community, right? A um, lot of familiar faces. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of gives the channel purpose, right? It's a right. hangout. 
It's literally a hangout where we get to talk about gear. I get to answer questions. I get to see, I'd say the familiar faces, but let's say the familiar names. And right. uh, it's just nice. It, it kind of brings it to life for me. And I think for them as well. And, and you know, um, here we are. Um, we did not have on Guitar Tales shows like this before COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were only, you know, we were in the Riverview studios and it would take a while to set them up. So we might tape every two or three months or maybe a month. Uh, I get the sense in a weird way you were ahead of the curve because you were doing this in this style, I suspect, long before COVID. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, unlike a lot of people that hop on the platform to, you know, kind of jump on the bandwagon, so to speak. I, exactly. Th- this was all an accident for me. I, this was like not a business plan. wasn't for free gear. wasn't for free money. It was just out of passion. You know, right. I enjoyed this stuff. And uh, in fact, before YouTube even had a streaming service, I used to stream to live stream. And I would tell people on YouTube, hey, here's the link to live stream. Come wow. on. So this is like pre-YouTube streaming. That's this amazing. Is when, this is when YouTube was cat videos. This and was I, before there was such a thing as a YouTuber. Wow. So it's, And it's before the word. Life. So you were an influencer before there were inf- influencers. Perhaps. Yeah. Before yeah. the moniker was there anyway. And, and it was all just an accident. I, um, you know, if you remember 15 plus years ago, uh, if you wanted to hear a piece of gear, you'd ha- listen to the wave clips, the wa- the wave files on a website. You're and right. When you- and when YouTube came out, it was like, oh, cool. Like, I don't need to index it because I could just make a little video clip and see what it is and hear what it is. And uh, what I didn't realize when I was putting those videos up is, oh, wow, people are starting to comment. People right. are starting to you know, like it, which, you know, it, it kind of became self-fulfilling, you know, that's really, you know, it's interesting. There's, there's so many of us out there who have mm-hmm. a passion for gears, for stuff, mm-hmm. you know, you get these conversations going. I, I had a buddy of mine, uh, just did a Facebook post about some amplifier and I mentioned Heathkit mm-hmm. and, and just among my little friend group, it just exploded. Oh my God, Heathkit. I remember that. You know, I never built a Heathkit. I bought a few used Heathkits. Mm-hmm. Or I remember the old Bogan open air tube amps, like the stereo ones. Like, and and for some reason, the nerds of us just absolutely love that kind of stuff. And, and I love that you have that passion for it. And I, you know, you're making me really curious. So, mm-hmm. before you started doing this, what was your past life? Um, well, you know, I was always, I think like a lot of the people that watch me just a guitar you know a guitar nut right right buying guitars selling guitars modding guitars um and not just guitars everything around it right that's right the, kind of the core but pedals effects um you know that type of thing i and, and i think that's why the community is as tight-knit as it is is because uh we we share a lot of the same um the, the same interests the right. same curiosities, right? We have the same questions. And uh, in fact, a lot of the content is driven by those that tune in that, you know, give me the ideas, the suggestions. In fact, once upon a time, my audio was really horrible and people would say, oh, do this or do that. And I actually learned, I think, as much from my community as hopefully they've learned from me. So well, it's it's definitely been a two-way street, not a one-way street. We have the same thing here. Um, part of the impetus uh, for Scott's hard work and revamping our remote shows to get them a more professional look to yell at me so I could talk closer to my microphone, uh, right. you know, and get those deeper tones in there, um, was learning from our guests. Um, one of our guests, I think from season two, we have a, a dear friend, Todd Yasui, who's a Hollywood producer. So mm-hmm. as soon as we got this software, Scott and I were on the phone, so to speak, like in this style with Todd, just having a legit Hollywood producer give us ideas about how to make the show content and appearance better. Yeah. It's, I love the two way street of it. Yeah. I think when people genuinely dig what you're doing, they want to weigh in, they want to help. Right. Right. And uh, if you enjoy doing what you're doing, you, you listen to the viewers. It's, it's no different than any other business, right? If you want to be successful, you need to, you know, pay attention to the feedback, pay attention to the comments. I, I believe that 
if people didn't care, they wouldn't bother. But I think they do care and they do bother. And it's, you know, it's in your interest, no matter what you do, is to pay attention to that stuff. Well, you know, another interesting thing, um, and I'm listening to the way you talk right now. Okay. And in, in a good way, in a really good way. Mm-hmm. And and what I see tonight and, and what I've seen in your videos is that you don't have an act. In other words, your show just seems to me to be pure organic. In other words, or authentic is probably a better word. Um, I would guess that your personality when we stop chatting now is exactly the same. You know, That's what I've been told. And that's a, I think that's a great thing. I have, I have a friend of mine I used to work with years ago. Wonderful, I'm a lawyer by day. Mm-hmm. Um, wonderful trial lawyer. And one of the things I like about him, and, and I think one of the, the keys to his success in the courtroom, is that he's the exact same guy when he's in front of a jury as when you have lunch with him, when you're having a cup of coffee, and I'm sure when he goes home to his family also. Mm-hmm. And, and I think for you, maybe part of your sort of secret sauce in your success is that, you know, like I just hear it in all your videos. You're, you're just you. I, I don't hear any pretense there. Uh, it, it just seems like you're, you're just a guy who's being himself, giving your honest appraisals of whatever you're reviewing at the time. Yeah. You know, I think, I think we all experiment, uh, even in your own journey, you'll probably experiment. You try to make the funny video, the parody video, Yeah, you know, you you experiment a little bit, but, uh, when all else fails, you just wind up going back to being who you are. Right. 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 Uh, Which, which seems to be the most consistent and seem just seems to work, you know? Yeah. And I guess in, in this really crowded field that, that you, you're like the cream who's risen to the top of it. Um, Maybe people could smell it out, um, you know. Yeah, perhaps. Um, you know, I I think, um, you know, here's something people don't see or really can't see is uh, I think when you are yourself, uh, it makes for better relationships, uh, right. just having that consistency. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of people that work at a lot of the companies and, you know, you had mentioned the word integrity before. Uh you know, I kind of put that at the forefront of what I do. And I think it just helps me just have better relationships with companies that allow me to cover, you know, more things, pr- create more content. Because uh, as you know, you can't do everything in a vacuum. You, you need to depend on the people around you to, you know, get some of these off the ground. So, yeah, I think just being yourself is uh, probably not a bad approach. Right. And, you know, I, I didn't even think of that before. You know, as I'm thinking about, you know, what I would want to inquire about your your professional career, I'm thinking about you in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. But under your business model, there's a boatload going on that's not in front of the camera. That's because, right. Because, you know, and, and this is something I know that you know much more about than I do. But in terms of how you monetize, you know, your avocation. Mm -hmm. Um, I would imagine there, you know, views pay for certain things because I've seen, you know, I've I've watched your videos. You got, there's a lot of advertising, but then you also, as you said, you have relationships with all of these manufacturers and companies and then people who might be guests on your show. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole different piece of it. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a, uh, uh, a lot that goes on when you're not on camera. Um, I just did a, uh, show this past Friday with, I think it was 19 pedals on a board. Uh, so there was a lot of back and forth with the company. There's me trying to understand since I wasn't familiar with the brand, right? Uh, it's something I want to show. Uh, sometimes something shows up that I think will be great. And I wind up sending it back because it wasn't right. There's a lot of time that's involved. Um, and, and then there's the setup. Is it working right? Is everything working? And, uh, you know, you, you could easily spend, I'll just just give you an average number, eight hours or maybe okay. 10 hours, let's say a day in hours, um, preparing for a one hour video, wow. right? And, and that's on the low side. I actually have some buddies of mine that do this that'll take a day, a full day, like tw- 24 hours to create a video. You know, when you factor in all the back and forth, the correspondence, the cut, the edit, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it gets real involved. And, well, yeah. and that's actually one of the things you try to, you're always asking yourself is how do you, 
how do you make the workflow more efficient, you know? Yeah, that's true because there are apparently only 24 hours in a day, I've heard. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things uh, we, we had Anthony Parker on, um, mm -hmm. who's wonderful, and he puts out really great videos on how to play and how to, or, or, or appreciation of certain really famous classical guitar riffs. Mm -hmm. But the continual pressure for him as part of his business to pump out content is, an, is enormous. And I would imagine uh, that's the same kind of, maybe not, uh, he's putting out two or three a day uh, because mm -hmm. his are short, his are maybe 45 seconds or so. So he's in that, he's in the, uh, the realm of um, reels, TikTok, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And you're, you're more almost in the, dare I say, like the Joe Rogan side of things in terms right. of you're giving, giving people really lengthy, meaty content and they could pick out chunks. But in whatever the format is, I would imagine that you're under a lot of pre <clears throat> professional pressure to put out good quality, but frequent content, I would think. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I used to do something 30, it was called 30 pedals in 30 days. I've retired it number of years now. Uh, and that used to be 60 videos in 30 days. Wow. Uh, because I would do the unboxing and the stories, one video, and then the demo in another video. And, um, you know, it comes down to workflow. Sometimes you have to take the scale out and say, does, you know, the input match the output, right? Right. Uh, and, you, you know, it's like everything else. You put it on a graph and you make a determination of, you know, do I continue with this? Or do I park it and do something else that maybe is a, you know, the audience likes a little bit better. Um, what's funny about something like that was it was a tremendous amount of work, as you could imagine. Right. Um, but there were other things I was able to spend my time on that was um, more widely received. So sometimes you got to make the tough decisions because time is your biggest obstacle. It's the one thing you, you can't get back and, um, you know, you have to use it wisely. You know, it, it, it's... It's true. And then I'm thinking about, you know, a lot of your videos are an hour long. Mm -hmm. And I think on some level, your success bucks the conventional wisdom um, in, in that the trend these days is short attention span theater, as we used to call it, however long ago that uh, that was on PIX, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I, I suspect it, 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 it harkens back to something you said earlier tonight. Um, which is that your fan base uh, is populated by folks who are enormously devoted to um, gear and, and are like you are and like I am just uh, uh, obsessed with an appreciation for gear. Mm -hmm. So you might, you might have a different market, I suppose, you know, than, than you know, hair products or something like that. Yeah. I, I think the, I, and I agree with you and I'm, I, I do the same thing. I like to watch the short videos. Uh, Instagram's a lot like TikTok now. Yeah. And they're easy to consume. Uh, it's, right. You know, it's um, it's good content that, you know, you could consume 50 pieces of content in, you know, uh, a matter of minutes, especially, you That's know, you crazy. just keep scrolling through. Yeah. But but what I ask myself is, what what's your takeaway from that? I, 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 I see that more as entertainment. Um, and I, I think I'm probably more in the informational or educational space. Yeah, versus I the agree. Entertainment space. That would be good. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's hey, you're you're parked in a parking lot waiting for uh, your kids to get out of school. TikTok right. is great. Yeah. Uh, but when you want to learn how to change the carburetor on your, you know, gas powered equipment, I don't know how effective TikTok is. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't. Think, yeah. You know, I'm not enriched. If I if I spend an hour which sadly I've done, you know, watching, you know, reels or what have you. And, yeah. and the worst thing is that hour, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's horrible because that hour goes by in what you thought was 10 minutes. That's right. Um, but, but and, I don't. And try I, to challenge yourself and ask you, what did you remember of what you watched? And it's right. pretty much nothing. It's a hundred percent nothing. Yeah. And we, we, we don't exit the experience enriched on any level. I agree with you. Yeah. And it's a, meanwhile, we continue to consume. I know. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I eat ice cream sometimes. I don't think there's a lot of nutritional value to it. I, I guess I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I it, it's funny. I, I always talk about uh, icing. You know, uh, if you're really, really hungry, 
you could eat a big ass pot. Oops, see, I cursed on the show. Uh, but you could eat a big pile of icing, and you'll mm-hmm. feel, you'll temporarily feel a little bit full. It'll give yeah. you briefly the sensation of having consumed something, but ultimately, within a half hour, you have none of the benefit of having consumed anything that's helped you. Yeah. You know? But it feels kind of good in your mouth. It doesn't feel good in your tummy. You know, once that's you a process whole, it. That's a whole psychology 101. I remember in college, uh, they had the picture of the kid with the ice cream and the eyes are lit up. Right. The, the before, the before, and then the after, the kid is all sad and depressed, you know, feeling miserable because it ate the bowl of ice cream, right? Right, yeah, and, you, and the sugar rush has gone away. Yeah. 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 And I guess that's what that does. And it, But it really is a testament to what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's one of the things... You know, we're doing a little bit of both. Um, you know, our shows are meaty. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we'll go, you know, anyway from a half hour to an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the studio, uh, we just, our rule was it just, it ends when it ends. And now we're kind of tamping it down a little bit from there. But then when Scott's been doing, which, and I suspect you're doing some of that too, um, he'll chunk it out and we'll release, we'll find those golden moments, you know, in the show. You know, I think that's smart. Um you know, we, we were just having a conversation about time and, you know, I don't know about you or anyone watching this, but I know I have a problem that there's never enough time in the day. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I say that because there is a lot of content I'd love to watch, uh, interviews with people. And there are some channels, uh, people who I even know that I trust and respect, right. but their videos are five hours. I, right. I don't have five hours to watch that as much as I'd want to. So I think, you know, part of the business decision is, Hey, how can I get the most of this in an hour? So more people can consume it. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to wrap with someone for five hours, but I always think of the viewer. Okay. I'm going to assume nobody wants to see my face for five straight hours. Right. So how do you sum it up? And, and, and that's some of, you know, your problem and my problem is, hey, how do I get the most of this in a 60 minute time frame? And I think if you could do that, you know, that's a good goal to have. Yeah. And and that's what we've been doing. It, And I, I can't tell you how many shows we've had where I say I can go another three hours, but I won't. Oh, yeah. 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 Because, you know, our, our show is really just two folks having a nice chat about guitars, guitar gear, music, things like that. And in, in real life, Though especially, you know, I always, um, <clears throat> I always have a beverage. Nice. Um, but in real life, those conversations usually are two or three or four or five hours. Right. But that's kind of, you're right. Uh, we have to think about um, in, in a non-self-indulgent way, the viewer and the listener. Right. You know? Yeah. You want to give them a snapshot, right? Yeah. Hey, listen, I can't watch a three hour Hollywood blockbuster. Right. right? Which actually so- has a plot. Which yeah. has a plot and directors yeah. and actors. Yeah. And uh, right. so, so I, I just take that as a litmus test of sorts and say, yeah, I don't know if I could watch any video for three hours on right. any topic. Right. So. Right. So. Um, so when you do your work. Right. I would imagine there are times when you get horrible gear and you get amazing gear. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm sort of pivoting a little bit here. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So let's talk about, so what happens when you get really, really bad gear and you, let's say you have a relationship with the manufacturer, how did in your line of work, how do you deal with that? You know, that's a great question. Um, Wait, because, before you answer, yeah. it was Scott's. <laughs> he I wrote it to me. Okay. Yep, I, I saw it. Yeah. Um, I can't take credit. You know, I, I have said, uh, I have said publicly that if I don't like it, I won't review it. And the reason what's interesting is if I didn't like it and reviewed it, I'd probably get more clicks because people always, you know, the negative outweighs. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But the way I look at it is, again, it comes back to that common denominator of time. Yeah. If if I only have X amount of time, I'm going to talk about something I enjoy, not something I don't. The one the one exception to that is if I do make a video of something and it doesn't hold the test of time, I feel a moral obligation to revisit that and say, Hey guys, I know I told you this was great, but you know, this is what happened to me. So kind of buyer beware. Right. All right. Uh, Yeah. uh, Because remember a lot of these videos are out there on perpetuity and it's fascinating how I'll, I'll get a comment on a video that's 10 years old. And they're like, how does it feel when you 
pull the volume back. It's like, I have no idea. I mean, that video is 10 years old. But when people are searching for things, they're not looking at the date you release the video. That makes sense. So sometimes just because people do go through the back catalog, I if I reviewed something and praised something and and there was a reason why it didn't hold up, I'll, I'll revisit that. And usually I'll do that at the end of the year, kind of, at, you know, the best and the worst year of the year. Oh, uh, that makes some, sense. If there's something I out, like, uh, outright don't like, I won't I won't review it. I'll give you an example. I had um, yeah. a pedal company. Uh, who I won't name that sent out some, pe- every one of them was noisy. I'm like, I can't review this. Uh, and they said, oh, okay, well, send them back. And I did. And that was the end of that. There was another company, uh, an amplifier company and the fuses, po- oh no, they were, uh, the amplifiers with DOA. And I give this amplifier company uh, a lot of credit because uh, they got on the phone with me. They did a video chat. Uh, we learned that uh, one of the fuses had popped um, right. and this, this was one of the amps where you could change tubes. And okay. I, I think it was the, the, the milliamp. They learned that one of the tubes that you could swap in or out was, I don't know what the technical word is. Let's say the amperage was too high. Okay. So they learned something, uh, from that whole experience. Um, but they got on the phone, they listened, uh, they sent out overnight at some fuses and you know, that's okay. Uh, yeah. I, a lot of times, believe it or not, you wind up becoming a consultant of sort for uh, some brands that care about that feedback, that care about, hey, um, you, inco- uh, uh, you you unearthed something that we didn't. Uh, we want to learn from that. Tell us what you did and how you did it. And and I look at that as really kind of a community service because, hey, better me than, you know, right. some kid that, you know, spends five, six hundred bucks on something. And they go to swap a tube and the thing craps out on them, right? So uh, not everything works 100%, but sometimes I'll weigh the company's uh, response to that, right? Right. How, how willing are they to, you know, try to understand, try to rectify it, that type of thing. So it all depends. And again, this is the stuff nobody sees. Right. And, and that's also part of the time suck, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah because, you know, so under that example... You know, you get the amplifier, you plug it in, right? I guess I'll review it. Does it work? You pick mm-hmm. up the phone or you shoot out an email. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a half hour. Oh, well, we'll call you back later this afternoon. Well, I'm going to be out this afternoon. I'll talk to you later. And then you're sitting there troubleshooting with them and you've lost four or five, six hours. And the content that you were planning on creating on March 17th doesn't happen at all yet. Yep. That happens. Yeah, that happens. A- and, but, and, and I would say for the most part, a lot of companies are more understanding than not. Um, right. I've done, I say consulting, but it wasn't a job. It was more like I gave them feedback, uh, right. feedback that I didn't sign up to give them. <laughs> it right. was like, Hey, you want to check this out? Sure. Hey, what's going on here? And that snowballs, like you said, into the five hour, uh, back and forth and video calls. And can you test this? You know, some, some, not all the time, but sometimes I get roped into that. And I'd have to say, uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of the companies would, you know, really understand that, you know, maybe a gift basket winds up at your house for, Hey, I know you spent a lot of time on this, you right. know, have some fruit on us. Like that happens, you know, it, and, I, and, and the cool thing is that three years from now, maybe they remember how great you were to them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and they come up with a great product, and they said, "You know, we want to be a sponsor on your show or something like that." Yeah, or, I think good people are good people, and when someone sees you putting in the time, you know, right. you get the thank you, you get the hey, if you're going to be at Nam, I want to buy you a drink. You get the, you know, you get the thank you in some way, shape, or form, and and you know what, that makes it all even worth it that much more. Right. Hey, and let's. It's funny you mentioned Nam. I, uh, Scott also just wrote it on our little back screen here. Mm-hmm. Um, most of our viewers know what NAM is. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everyone does. So talk about what that event is and then how it interplays with your business. You know, NAM is an interesting thing for me. Uh, I think NAM helped me grow this channel. I, I Listen, I don't want to pat myself on the back, so don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to do that. But I think I might have been one of the first YouTube people to actually cover NAM. Wow. Um, and... The good news is somebody could probably go verify that, you know, just go back to, I think maybe 2011, 
uh, and usually it was companies that were putting their content up. And I, you know, I had gotten an invite and I went, I brought a camera, I brought my own internet. And, uh, I think I was uploading about 70 videos per NAM. Wow. What always fascinated me about NAM, so NAM has helped build my brand. You know, it right. gave me an opportunity to shake hands, uh, uh, build relationships, meet the people at the other end of the email line. Right. 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 But NAM for me has always been a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, now more so than ever before. And I'll explain to you what I mean. NAM is an industry trade show. NAM was a pre a pre internet entity that allowed dealers to buy from builders, right? Okay. It, it was uh, North American music merchants, I think is what it stands for. But basically, uh, stores would go to NAM to buy from um, uh, uh, manufacturers. That's what the intended purpose is. It's a trade show. Right. It's a non-public trade show. Right. Well, it's an invite only type event. Uh, well, or was. It's not an invite only. You could sign up and pay the $200 or whatever it is okay. now. $200 NAM fee and they would vet to see, are you a company? Um, uh, are you a brick and mortar company? Are you an online store? Like they wanted to understand who you are. Okay. And I, I know that because I was one of the early folks that actually did that. I had a, uh, you know, I had a website. I signed up as media. Um, now it's like, it's everything but that. In fact, I know a lot of stores. I talk to a lot of dealers and they're like, I don't go or I don't order product at NAM. Um, you know, I could just go on my dealer portal I could and order from there. I don't need to go to the show. So right. I think it's really become more of like a comic con than a trade show. Gotcha. So and, it's and, more, yeah. but I think and it's NAM, networking now, right? It's networking. And what's interesting is NAM is a non-for-profit thing. Okay. Um, but it, it just feels it, it does. You know, I don't think Comic Con is non for profit. <laughs> right. Right. And I think I think the intended purpose of Nan has changed. I just wonder if uh, you know they change things on their side because yeah, it's, it's it's like government, right? <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah. definitely morphed. You know. Yeah. It becomes its own uh, self perpetuating entity, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Nam is fun. If you've never been to Nam. It's a lot of fun. You're going to see a lot of faces. Right. Uh, there's even outside of NAM when you go to the hotels, there's always live music, uh, food trucks. NAM is a lot of fun. Yeah, Scott and I had talked about going. Uh, I haven't been, but I, yeah, it's I, fun. I would. What, when and where is the next one? You know, they changed everything up uh, because of uh, COVID. I don't right. know where they landed that plane. Uh, but it used to be Winter NAM was in Anaheim and Summer NAM was in Nashville. Gotcha. Um, I think they consolidated down to um, uh, one show. And I want to say, if, if, if memory serves me correctly, now they're doing the summer NAM in Anaheim, which, which is brutal because uh, while it's Southern California and it's a, a beautiful place, you're competing with Disneyland. Oh, yeah, that's so, right. So so Summer Nam in Nashville was wonderful. In fact, I always liked Summer Nam better than Winter Nam. Uh, it was a little little cooler, a little more hangout-ish, uh, smaller, uh, more quality over quantity. Well, Winter well, Nam was all qu uh, quantity. And Anaheim doesn't really have a lot, whereas Nashville does. Yeah, Nashville's a lot of fun. I haven't been there in years, uh, but yeah, and Nashville's a cool town. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, they're starting to call it Nash Vegas because there's so much to do, right? It's yeah. exciting. It's exciting to be. But summer, uh, winter Nam in, I'm sorry. Now, again, I, I'm pretty sure this is correct. They, they narrowed it down to one Nam in the summer in Anaheim. And it's not just you're competing with Disneyland. The airline rates go up. The hotel rates go up. The availability of the hotel. Like, it's, it's a problem. Oh, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. It's a big pro and, and that's not just my opinion. I've spoken to dozens of people that have all said the same thing. It's costing me three times as more to go. I can't get the hotel I want. You know, everything's booked. Everything's more money. Um, so I, I, you know, that's, that's where I believe the plane landed for. Right. Me. So now here's the question of the hour on that before we put a pin in this topic. Yeah. Are they still filling the room? 
so to speak? Well, I don't think they've been filling the room for a long time. Okay. Then In they fact, have to respond to that, right? Yeah, I, I think they wound up merging two shows. Uh, one was an electronic show with the NAM show, just to oh, all right. uh, you know, make the numbers look a little different than they were. That's my understanding. I don't know that to be fact, but you know, news like that circulates pretty quickly. I think NAM in general has always been because listen, the intended purpose um as is obsolete. Right, right, because it because of internet buying and things like that. Absolutely. And when you're yeah. a company and you're being asked to stroke a check for 50k or 100k, you have to ask yourself, do I need to do that for dealers or consumers to buy my product? Right. I mean, people buy. Th- I mean, one of your one of your things was, can I buy safely? Or what was it? Can I buy a guitar off the internet? I saw one uh, of your videos. Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, how, how to buy, you know, smart. Right. And and, yeah. and I think more and more, I mean, that guitar I got from uh, Scott's uh, page, Guitar yep. see that great Ivy. But mm-hmm. I, I got it sight and seen, loved it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I would think for, you know, if, if you're, especially if you're, let's say, like a boutique pedal or guitar company, and they're saying, all right, well, a booth off to the side over here for three days straight will cost you, like you said, 50000 No, Better that's look- price. That's probably sm- – those little booths, a lot of times they have like booth sharing where they take okay. a, a lot of smaller – but but like the big booths, they have to be in the hundreds of thousands of wow. dollars for the bigger companies. But the smaller ones, I'd probably say, you know, five grand. I, I knew someone who went to Summer Nam. Uh, I'll leave their company name out. But they right. had a, like a 10-foot – little square and they were about ten thousand dollars they spent about ten grand that was a lot of money yeah and and that's yeah that doesn't come easily for a small company no and what's crazy is um uh, they're they're friends now we became friends and i asked them i said so how much did you sell at nam and they said we didn't sell anything uh and they said that's why we want to work with you i'm like right so you give them ten grand (laughs) right right right. nothing and then I'm, I'm I'm hooking you up with a solid over here. It's like something's a little off. I know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that that is. But it, you're right. It's it certainly to me seems obsolete um, the way it, it it's handled. Uh, one other topic. I'm going to pivot right now. Uh, yeah. Your the video with you and Phil X. Talk about that. Well, there was a few. Um, I I I first met Phil X. I'm really bad with dates, but we did a little Nam jam together in a booth. And I can't even remember. This is when he was working for Fred at Americana. Maybe it was the Fred at Americana booth. So we okay. met there. Um, and then we met again at GitCon. Yeah, GitCon. Uh, which What's was that? In, uh, GitCon was in Germany. Okay. Uh, it was a guitar event put together by uh, the owners of Framus Warwick. Uh, and I went there for a few years. I was invited. And right. uh, yeah, I got to jam with Phil X on stage, which is a ton of wow. fun. Wow. Tell you, you, talk about somebody who is the same on stage or off stage. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, full of, I mean, just a barrel of energy. A oh barrel my God. of positive energy. Uh, there's, it, it's, he's an amazing person. N- not to mention, he's an, an amazing guitar player. It's crazy. The way he plays guitar... I was watching him. We had Matt O'Ree on our show a couple of years ago, who was mm-hmm. with him on stage. He attacks the strings from so far away and hits them with laser-like precision. Yeah. Like, like his style, he's punching the guitar and, and hitting it perfectly. It's very impressive. He, he's just, in a, there's, there's definitely an aura around Phil X. Uh, yeah. And I, I've met a lot of musicians, and it's amazing um, how, like you brought, you mentioned earlier, a lot of people are different on camera than right. they are off camera. He is just, there's so much positive energy. Uh, and he's the same person on camera, off camera. It's like, he's the guy you want to hang out with. He's the guy That's you want to have a beer with. Um, just really, and, and humble. Oh my God. Just humble as pie. That, those are the best. They are. Uh, yeah. Uh, because there are. You know, it's funny. There, I, I, I won't name the name, although I'm tempted to. Through a weird um, uh, connection, I ended up spending New Year's with one of the late night TV personalities, mm-hmm. who is off the charts talented, 
and is was, was very nice to me mm-hmm. because he wrongly thought I mattered in his little world, and I did it. Uh, but was just a complete jerk, just an right. absolute jerk. And every time I see him on TV, I think, all right, you're off the charts talented, but no positive energy mm-hmm. coming out of your mouth. You're just a miserable person. Uh, so when you get those people with the positive energy, uh, you know, I think that's really that that, that person's a keeper. I have know? to tell you, in all the years I've been doing this, I don't know if I could on one hand uh, count the the bad experiences. You know, uh-huh. they. I, they're, they're, for me, they're few and far between. There's been a few, um, but I got to tell you, and I, I put a few in quotes because I think what we're doing here, uh, the love of music, the love of guitars, it's a tight-knit community. Right. And we're all kind of in this boat together. And I think that comes out. People that work for guitar companies love working for guitar companies. Right. Uh, um, so whether you're working for uh, a company or you're a consumer of that company or your media covering that company, there's, there's really genuine passion and interest in this. Uh, cause listen, we, we have choices. We don't, I don't have to play the guitar. I don't have to buy a guitar. They don't have to work there. Right. That's true. But, yeah. But we, we, we make conscious choices. So I've, I've had a couple of bumps across the road, but they, they've been few and far between. Now, with that said, let's say. This is every day. Yeah, a couple down here. Yeah, and, and yeah. A lot, really, just, uh, you know, above the average. Just some of the events I've been to have been phenomenal. Meeting people like Phil X has been phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, the the real highlights, uh, there's a lot of them. I have a lot of highlights that I'm really proud of. It's really special. Um, g- g- give me an example of, of a super highlight. You brought it up, Phil X. Phil X was a highlight. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, being invited to Germany three times. Wow. That was amazing. Sweetwater invited me out before. I was the first YouTube person that they invited out. Now they're inviting a lot of people. They're like, oh, okay. there's value to this. Right. Yeah. You're the progenitor, the as I said. I was yeah. the first. That's great. Um, That's huge. And I could say that confidently because every the beautiful thing about YouTube is it's all time stamped. Right, and right. They they took me to uh, a ball game, box seats at a ball game. Wow. Uh, took me out to dinner. We had a ball game. Uh, gave me the a nice tour. Uh, you know, had coffee, hanging out with the guys. It was just, it was really nice. And, and you know what it is? It, it's validation and recognition for number one, the good work you're doing, but number two, your position in this community. You know, yeah. like it, it, and that's got to feel good. You know, like I, I always talk about my day job and anytime someone asks as a lawyer and anytime somebody asks me to give a seminar to help teach other lawyers how to do what I do, mm-hmm. I'm off the charts flattered, mm-hmm. you know, cause it, it's a little bit of recognition that someone's appreciating that I work hard at my craft right. and I like to help people and things like that. Uh, so that's fabulous. I um, think, I yeah, think human nature, people want to help people. Right. I think that's I think a hu- right. I think that's a human nature thing of a of a person with a good moral compass. We want to help each other. Yeah. And um, when you're put in that position, whether it be a, a lawyer helping another lawyer or me helping another musician, um, that's the stuff that motivates us and drives us and makes us want to do, you know, go a little further, a little harder, you know, every day type of thing. And, that's and how I, I see it anyway. I, I love that attitude. And, you know, I think the fact that by your personality and by just what, you know, the fact that you end up, you're a guitar player, you, you pulled yourself into an area with like-minded people. You know, there aren't too many jerks who love guitar gear. You know, like, I, I have to yeah. agree with that. I have yeah. to agree with that. You know? Yeah. So it's funny. I was talking to my daughter who likes music. Um, she's 18. Okay. And we were talking about mosh pits. So okay. I'm, da- I'm dating myself. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And, uh, you know, at a glance, you see people slamming into each other. Right. But what you don't see is if somebody's down, they all pick them up. Right, right. And, and that's the beautiful thing. You want to be crazy and, and, and have fun. You could do that. But as soon as somebody's down, and I've seen bands stop, guys, stop, like stop the music, get that guy off the ground. Right, that right. Guy. That's beautiful. So, 
and, and I think that's kind of the, you know, we're in the mosh pit of uh, the guitar. That's <laughs> That's a great metaphor. So let me do this. Uh, we're uh, hovering at about 45 minutes right now, which is sort of the sweet spot of our show. Let, let me hit you with one little tidbit that maybe you can give some of our viewers. And, and this sure. is a Scott question. Okay. Uh, what's the most important item in the, in the chain when it comes to tone? So you start with your finger, right? You maybe have mm-hmm. a pick, maybe you're using your finger. You've got a speaker on the other end. Probably doesn't lend itself to an easy answer, but give us some thoughts uh, as we close out about either the most important or some of the most important items between pick and speaker? Um, Well, someone told me, I I can't claim it's myself, but they said, it's not the wand, it's the the magician. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And when you think about it, um, by the way, you don't have to zoom in on me. I actually like seeing you so we could, we could chat. (laughs) So, so when, when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense, right? Right. And, and, and I'm going to get to your answer, but let me explain. Something. Yeah, I want to hear it. One of the problems we all have, I have other other YouTube people, I've had this conversation. Um, every time I demo an amp or a pedal or a guitar, we always get the, it sounds the same. Right, 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 right. There's a reason why it sounds the same, because it's the magician, not the wand. Right, right. If you took Eddie Van Halen, you took Stevie Ray Vaughan, and you get, they're still going to sound like Eddie Van Halen. They're still going to sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan. So I think the character starts with the musician. We were talking about Phil X. I've seen Phil X play on 10 different brands of guitars through 10 different brands of amps, and he's phenomenal. It sounds great. Right, right, right. So I think it starts with what you have inside that makes you you. That's the most important thing. Right. So next, now we're going to move to second most important. Right. <laughs> so I just wanted yeah. to clarify that's a, the question. That's a great caveat to, to, the, to your answer. Yeah, because it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a tough one. You know, I could I could easily say the guitar right i could just as easily argue you're you're a lawyer you could appreciate i could argue (laughs) both sides of that right Right. i don't know who wins a jury may have to decide right i think the guitar is very important because you know you're connected to it right it's like the guitar is the tires to a car right 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 that is what you are inter in you know that that's that's where the rubber meets the road right my hands are on the guitar your Your hands hands are are on the the guitar guitar, which means you know when you think about what's the most important thing i probably have to say the guitar because the guitar is going to determine the tone right Right. you're using humbuckers are you using single coils are you using a set neck a bolt on the type of wood is it more bright Mm -hmm. is it more dark right so when you determine that type of tire that you want to put on your car, that's going to really define, uh, plus your comfort. Are you comfortable? Right. Is it heavy? Is it heavy? Am I straining under it? Yeah. So, so I would probably say being that you are touching that instrument, that is, that is probably the most important thing. That makes perfect sense. Now, with that said, if you want to play Metallica and you have a Fender Twin Reverb, that's not going to work. So I could right. argue that the amp is really important. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, that's I fantastic. Take, I could take any guitar, but I need the right amp to play the right Right, song. That's, that's very true. Yeah. I could take a Strat. I could take a hollow body. I don't care. But I need a dual rectifier if I want to sound like Metallica, right? That's so right. It, it depends on, uh, for tone, you know, I could probably argue that the the amp is equally important because that's when you think about it, that's what's shaping the tone. The sig- right, because you've got a signal. We did a whole we did we've done a whole episode on pickups. Right. But at the end of the day, you've you've got a reverse motor, basically, which is what the pickup is, I learned. Yeah. Um, but then what are you doing with that signal? And then once you manipulate the signal, then what kind of what are you going to use to move the air? You know, and how fast and how large a volume of air will you be pushing, you know, Mm -hmm. or are you You going straight into the soundboard and all that crazy stuff? You know, 
what's the most important item in the chain when it comes to tone? That's like asking, what's more important, tires or gasoline? Right. It's yeah. like, uh, you kind of need both. Right. That's <laughs> funny. But you know what's great? In asking the question, we got that great answer out of you. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. So I, got, I, I really want to thank you. Um, and, and it is true. I could do three more hours, but <laughs> that would be self-indulgent of me. This, but this I would was love a lot to. of fun. I, it I really was. enjoyed uh, being on with you. So thank you so much for uh, for the opportunity. Absolutely. And, and as uh, I know, we have the banner. Uh, it's been going under the show all the time. Uh, if you go on, I will say this. If you go on um, Google or any of your search engines, The Tone King, it's that That's easy. Good. And it takes us right to your website. And then you very conveniently have all the videos. You have your gear there. So it, it's very user friendly. But I want to thank you so much for joining us on guitar tales that's right one they, of those bad boys. one of the well i'm gonna leave everyone off with one of those bad boys right one there. of those bad i got two of them <laughs> there you go have a great night and thank, thank you thank you so much Cohen, host of Guitar Tales, and Scott Guitarist and Dangle. So we put together this show every week for you guys, or at least every other week. We want you to do two things for us, which would be good for everyone. If you could subscribe on our YouTube channel, that would be great. And, and share. Please share the videos around with your friends. Let them know Guitar Tales is out there. Uh, it's not just about guitar players. We have a lot to offer. Thank you.